Hey everyone, Jen Turkis here, and I am so excited to share my mixed media, watercolor, fun, low stress, thank you card. So we're going to be using the new Lovely Later Layers Water Lilies. I absolutely love these die sets from Honeybee Stamps, the Lovely Layers dies. They really, truly make it so easy to create these dimensional uh, flowers, and I just enjoy putting them together so much. So you can see here, I am die cutting each of the layers out of some Distress watercolor cardstock. I'm die cutting them out of the smooth side, but you could use either the smooth side or the textured side. And I'm kind of die cutting them in order. The Honeybee Stamps Lovely Layer Dies make it so easy to layer them and put them together. So I knew right away how to do this. And as I was die cutting them, I was adding them on top of each other and kind of seeing how things fit together. Then I was left with all the little pieces and these ones I was just taking a second to figure out, but it wasn't hard at all. And once I get all of these layers die cut, you can see I'm kind of moving things around and figuring things out, I am gonna start watercoloring. Now, I know a lot of the times when people hear, oh, I'm gonna watercolor, people immediately get nervous. I think because it is a fine art form, people think that they have to be a fine artist to be able to do that. But with the lovely layers from Honeybee Stamps, and here you can see I'm using Distress Watercolor Pencils, you really don't need a whole lot of art skill. Really, I'm just playing with mixing two greens. I'm using Peeled Paint and Rustic Wilderness uh, from the Distress Watercolor Pencil sets. And I'm just playing. I'm adding a little water. I'm adding a little pigment. I'm moving the color around. Once I get things looking the way I want, I start to dry it with my Ranger heat tool. And then I'm now layering and adding some more pigment just to kind of intensify that color. But again, just play. There's nothing that's gonna go wrong, except maybe you're gonna have to die cut another lily pad and start watercoloring again but it's really just creative play and, and meant to be a lot of fun. I find once I get into this process, I find it really relaxing. Sometimes I get a little carried away with, you know, adding more layers than necessary, but it's just a fun, fun process. So here I am, I'm coloring the stem and some of the leaves with Rustic Wilderness. And then these little ones are the highlights on the leaves. So I'm only going to color those with peeled paint. I'm adding some peeled paint onto the stem and the base of the leaves just to kind of make it a different color, give it some dimension. I'm layering some more peeled paint on those highlights. And again, I'm using the Ranger Heat Tool. The Ranger Heat Tool is fabulous, you guys, because it's a diffused heat. It's not going to scorch my paper. It's also not going to blow these teeny little pieces across my studio table where I'm not going to ever be able to find them again. And it really makes a big difference when you are watercoloring or doing any inky techniques. Um, using a Ranger heat tool instead of an embossing gun just makes it so much better. So I decided I'm going to glue these teeny little pieces onto the leaves now before I continue watercoloring. Because if you guys could see my studio table off camera, it's a hot mess. So I'm adding these little pieces with the honeybee wet glue onto those base leaves. If any glue kind of squishes out, I just use my craft pick to just kind of wipe that away. So the Distress Watercolor Pencils are really so much fun to work with. Uh, you can see from my sets here, um, they're very loved. I have my sets kind of in a rainbow order. They're not in their original order as they come in sets anymore. Um, but you can see that I've been using them a lot and loving them. I also have an online class all about Distress Watercolor Pencils. 
So if it's something that you wanted to try out, or maybe you've purchased the pencils, but you're afraid to uh, break into them, hopefully this video will show you how they're not really scary. Uh, but if you wanted to learn some more about them, I would really encourage you guys to check out my online class. You'll be able to uh, sign up on my website. You get a downloadable handout and access to the class videos, which are all available in unlisted YouTube videos. So you don't need to have a Facebook account. All right, so I just colored the little centers of the flowers with some fossilized amber and some mustard seed. And now we're gonna get into watercoloring these lilies. I'm only gonna be using picked raspberry, uh, but I'm just gonna be making a uh, you know different variety of looks with how much water or how little water I am using. A lot of these layers are just base layers that we're building up upon, so it doesn't really matter what they look like. I just want to add some pink to them so no white shows through when I start to uh, layer my uh, images. And here you can see I am building up the shadow, trying to keep some highlights. Um, again, drying them in between. Now I'm kind of layering them to see, yeah, I like the way they look, so I'm good. I'm going to be done with this little bud um, of the water lily, lily set, and we're going to layer that up. And once you layer them, it really does look so much nicer than when they're all pieced together. So I added an acrylic block on top of that set just to kind of let it rest while that wet glue sets. And now I'm watercoloring the big lily. So you can see I have it all layered together on the left side. So as I start to watercolor these petals, I'm gonna be able to see what petals are really important, what ones I'm actually going to see. Um, and then the ones that I'm not gonna see, I'm just gonna put a base color of the picked raspberry down. I like to start to add the darkest part of the petal first, um, and then I kind of brush it out with water to soften the edge and to have my highlighted area. So you can see here on that large petal that's, that's pointing towards me, that's exactly what I just did. And I'm just gonna keep working my way down uh, the different layers of this water lily. So again, you can see here, I am just adding the shadow. So a really heavy amount of pigment with that uh, picked raspberry distress watercolor pencil and then I'm gonna just go in with a clean brush not a lot of water um, and I'm gonna brush out and soften those edges I think that's probably the trickiest part of working with any watercolor medium is uh, just learning how to control your water and knowing when you're gonna want to have a lot of water or when you're gonna want to have a little bit of water uh, it's you're not able to see it because my hand is off camera, but often when I clean my paintbrush and I dip into my water bucket, I'll touch the water brush or the paintbrush to my hand. And that sense of touch really allows me to tell how much water is on my paintbrush and if it's going to be too much or too little. It's kind of a weird thing to explain um, until you try it, but. Um, Again, looking at your paintbrush, it's hard to tell how much water is there, but if you just gently touch your paintbrush to your hand, you'll be able to kind of sense how much water is there. So I'm kind of just checking out how things are looking uh, all layered up. I went back and reworked a few petals, and I'm layering on um, my finished petals onto the new petals so I can kind of just see what is going to be peeking through, what's going to actually be seen, and what is just needing a little bit of a base color of pink, which you can see I'm scribbling on here. So I kind of laid down my dark layers first so I knew what I was working with, and now I'm just adding that base color. I really love working with the Distress Watercolor Pencils. I find it so, so easy. I am not a, you know, super skilled watercolorer. I've just been kind of practicing over the years. And um, in the past, I would always watercolor with regular Distress inks. Yeah, I knew the palette really well. I knew how the inks were gonna react with water. 
And so now that the Distress watercolor pencils are out and they're so highly pigmented, I have just really enjoyed watercoloring with them. Um, and so again, you can see I figured out where my shadow was going to be and then I just blended out for a highlight. So here I am, I'm figuring out again what, what parts of the petals are going to be seen. It's typically, you know, where there is detail in the dye. Um, Honeybee Stamps will design these lovely layer dyes to have some details, some indents, some grooves. Um, but I also just like to kind of figure out if there's anywhere else that is going to be seen when I start to layer these pieces together. So separately, they might not look so great, but when you do start to layer them together, it's amazing how beautiful and how easily this comes together. You could add color to this lovely layer, um, lovely layers lily dye by doing some ink blending. You could add color to these by using your Copic markers or your alcohol-based markers. And you also could add color to these by using uh, colored pencils, really whatever coloring medium you are comfortable with. So I'm on my last layer here and I started just as I have been starting. I figured out where my shadow is gonna be. And then now I'm just filling in that base color. So no white paper will be peeking through when I start to layer these together. And then I'm going to go in and start to pull color from that shadowed area with a clean brush. I say clean uh, very loosely because later on you guys are going to see my water container and it's not clean water at all. My water container is never clean, clean uh, water. Um, Dawn, if you're watching this video, please look away. <laughs> She's an amazing watercolorist. And uh, I know you're typically supposed to have like a clean cup of water and a dirty cup of water, and, but I, I don't get time for that. I'm just watercoloring for fun and I'm trying not to stress out about it too much. All right, so I'm just building up the layers. Um, anytime I kind of want to do that and make the shadows a bit more intense, I will bring in my heat tool and dry the layers, which you saw I just did. And I'm happy. I think once I start to layer this all together, it's going to look really, really pretty. So I'm just cleaning off my uh, table. It's a glass tabletop. So I just sprayed a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and wiped it with a flour sack cloth. Nice and quick and easy cleanup. And now I'm using some wet glue to add these layers together. And oh my gosh, you guys. I love it. It makes me feel like I'm a watercolor artist. Um, it makes me feel real fancy, even though I'm not fancy. <laughs> all right, so we are going to add all of these in, and then we're going to add the center little yellow stamen part. And it's going to look like a water lily. So pretty. So, so pretty. All right, so I am going to set that aside, and I was kind of in the mood to continue with my watercoloring. I didn't want to stop, and I decided I wanted to make a little bit of a mixed media background. And this is a fun technique that I just kind of came up with playing with the Distress Watercolor Pencils. I'm dipping the Distress Watercolor Pencil speckled egg into my cup of water. As you can see here, I promised you my cup of water is very dirty. Um, I'm dipping the pencil in and I'm scribbling it onto my craft sheet. The craft sheet has a little bit of tooth to it. It is a smooth surface, but it has a little bit of tooth. So it's kind of grabbing that pigment and holding on to that pigment. Then I'm taking a clear transparency, just a clear piece of plastic, and I'm picking up the pools of pigment and I'm rolling it onto the background. And I'm using my heat tool to dry in between the layers. I'm splattering some of the pigment from the pencil, adding some water droplets, just going to town, having a ton of fun. Now I'm going to use the Gansai Starry Colored Background uh, Metallic Paints. I wanted to add a little bit of gold. And I've actually been splattering these paints, but then breaking them up with the Distress Sprayer to give kind of a wispy gold look. 
and then adding some droplets of gold on top. I've been really enjoying that kind of look. And because I'm not quite done, I wanted to add a little bit more texture to this background. I'm gonna be using this new mini messages stamp set. I'm picking out a few messages that work with the sentiment of thank you, which is what this card is gonna be. I wasn't sure how much of the words were gonna show up, so I wanted to make sure that it made sense. And I'm going to add these to an acrylic block in a clustered formation. And then I'm going to be using the Hickory Smoke uh, Distress Watercolor Pencil, which is a really nice gray. And I'm actually rubbing the pigment directly onto the clear stamp, uh, dipping the pencil into my cup of water, and then rubbing directly onto the clear stamps and then stamping it onto my background. Now for my background, I am using the textured side of the Distress Watercolor Pencil. Um, I'm sorry, the Distress Watercolor Cardstock. So I know the stamping wasn't going to be super crisp um, and it is a bit blobby just from the water, but I like this look. This is actually exactly what I wanted it to look like. It didn't necessarily need to be super legible, but just enough to add some more texture. So then I'm going to take the thank you for all of you do um, sentiment from To The Wise One stamp set, and I'm going to stamp and die cut those. And now I'm going to kind of figure out my arrangement of my water lilies onto uh, my card background here. I'm really loving how pretty it is. The pink and the green popped up off of the speckled egg uh, distress color. That speckled egg color is really kind of a, uh, a very unicorn type color. It's a surprise. You don't really know how it's going to turn out or how it's going to interact with the rest of your card. And I'm always, always happy when I incorporate it into a design. All right, so now I'm going to commit. I'm going to start to add down my uh, greenery onto my card background using that water lily uh, for placement before I glue it down. And I'm adding the little water lily bud. And then we will add the big water lily. I'm going to have that water lily pop off the edge a little bit just to kind of break out of the frame of the card. I love to do this and kind of show some movement onto your card. And then I am trying to figure out where I want the sentiments. I kind of thought I was going to overlap the water lily, but I was really impressed with my watercoloring, so I didn't want to cover that up too, too much. So I'm going to use some uh, 3L foam strips and add the sentiment tucked in towards the bottom corner of the card. That way, it's not taking away from the water lily, but it's still kind of overlapping uh, the lily pad. So everything is clustered together onto the card. I really, really love how this card turned out, you guys. And again, I just had so much fun playing with the Distress Watercolor Pencils. And last but not least, I thought I would add a few pearls to my background. I could not find the Pacific Northwest pearls that just came out, um, but these blue pearls that I'm using from an older pearl set are very similar to the ones included in the current Pacific Northwest pearl set. So I'm adding a couple down below and a little trio up above just to add a little something something. And there we go, a really, really pretty thank you card um, that I know will brighten the day of whoever I eventually mail this to. I hope that I took away the fear of watercoloring for you guys. And uh, definitely check out those Distress Watercolor Pencils if you haven't already. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye!